Today I am looking at PaidStorm Studio right here on the iPad. There is a Windows, a Mac, and a Linux version of this available, but I'm gonna be looking at the iOS version. There are two reasons I'm looking at the iOS version. The first reason is because I want to, and the second reason is because there is a demo available for the other versions. There is a light version of this available in the App Store. So if you wanna check that out, that's available for you, but it doesn't have all the features that this does. So as we take a look around PaintStorm Studio, the first thing that you're probably going to notice is that some of these menus are tiny, small, but if you tap on any one of them, you can blow them up. I think this is the biggest thing that PaintStorm Studio is adding to its app that other apps apps out there don't have. Because I can go in here and tap on any of these interface elements and make them larger, it has basically allowed PaintStorm to create a full-blown desktop app that works really well on the iPad. Now, like its name says, PaintStorm is really geared towards digital painters, and there's a lot of features in here for them specifically, and I think that is one of the major things that separates it from Procreate. Whereas Procreate was thought of from the ground up as how it could work as a painting program on the iPad, this is really trying to take a really hardcore desktop piece of software and put it here on the iPad. Everything you'd expect to be here is here. For example, if I tap on any of these menu items, I can bring up a lot of things. I have a lot of brushes. I have a pencil activated right now, so if I wanna come in here and, and start sketching and kind of get another character roughed in here, I could definitely do that. And then I could come in here and grab any of the other tools that I might wanna play with. As you can see here, I have already started sketching and I've already started playing around with it. I think what this app does really, really well is it blends paint extremely well. If I open up my layers down here and go down to my layer palette, uh, then I go to my colors. I'm gonna grab like a, a nice purplish color. Now let me go back over to my brushes and find a, a nice blending brush here, like just this top one. I can go in here and you can see how it can merge colors together and, and it blends them really well. It's blending that blue with that purple. Different brushes are going to blend uh, differently. This one is going to blend a little bit more, so if you want a little more blending. And of course, you can always go in and there are a ton of brush features available. Uh, everything from like size and opacity to the amount of color that you want to uh, place on that brush before you start drawing with it. There is a ton of functionality that they have uh, fit into these brushes. Now, a lot of the artwork that I do doesn't really rely on mixing paint. I do a lot of line art and stuff like that, so I'm kind of new to this idea of mixing colors together, but fortunately for me, there is a mixer. So if you want to go in here, you can actually go in and play with a brush ahead of time and see how it's how it's going to work. I think because I have so much paint on here, it's mixing a lot of these you know wet layers together, and so if you really want to bring in some of that purple, you gotta go in here and layer it up, layer it up, and layer it up. And, but it's a nice way it's to have this mixer uh, to kind of go in, play with your brushes a little bit before you actually commit them to the canvas. Now you'll also notice that I, I closed down the mixer. There is so much customizability in this app. You can shrink windows, you can expand windows, and it's all customizable as far as how they appear. For example, all of the windows grow from the upper left and grow bigger when you tap on them. And so um, like I have my color over here, which I've been using a lot, but since it grows from that upper left-hand corner, it was kind of getting in the way and covering up part of my canvas. So I went in here to the settings and I actually changed the opacity. I could bring the opacity all the way up so it's smaller when I'm opening and closing it. I, I can make the opacity less. I like having it be as transparent as possible. Also, you can adjust the scale and there's a bunch of other things. There's the ability to uh, reset the color. I think you can go in here and recolor any of the menu elements. I've seen people do that on the desktop. I haven't fiddled around with it enough to see it here on the iPad. Some of the little quirks that I've come across, like in the brushes, for example, let me get rid of that for a second. If I wanna increase my brush size, I have a lot of uh, little icons over here along the left-hand side. Some of them are obvious. For example, this is my undo. If I wanna undo those little marks I made over there, this is the rotate canvas. If I wanna zoom, I can pinch and zoom to do that. Uh, that's very easy to do, but if I wanna rotate my canvas, I can't rotate that way. There's this rotate button right here, and if I hold it down, I can then use my pencil to rotate. The only downside is I have a hard time getting it exactly back to like the, the 90 degree angles that I want. I can see that it's on a slight angle. I just zoom in so that 
That's the type of thing that bothers me. There's probably some way to actually just go in and, and get that to snap back, but I haven't figured it out yet. There's other things. This icon right here is a brush resizer. So if you hold that down, you can actually increase your brush size. Uh, so you can see uh, the one thing I have noticed is that since these brushes are rendering, uh, the bigger they get, the slower they get. Now, I will say the only time I notice that is when I'm covering like big, big areas. If I shrink this way down to like 70 pixels, you can see it moves pretty fast. It's, it's really responsive. It's really nice. Most of the time I'm painting, I don't notice that slowdown at all. But once you get your brush really big, you're definitely going to notice some of that slowdown. I'm going to shrink that back down there. You have your eraser tool. So if I want to erase anything, I could do that. Your eraser is customizable just like your brushes. Also, you have hand gestures two fingers let me do that two fingers to undo and i got three fingers to redo so that's nice that it's pulled in some of those gestures that you see in other ipad painting apps as well and pretty much everything you would expect from any painting app is available here so for example let me go to another layer let me grab another brush actually i think just a simple ink brush should work pretty well let me grab a, actually grab a color here yeah that's a good that's a good color am i on the right layer i have alpha lock turned on so I wasn't able to draw on that layer that explains a lot but if I just go in here make an enclosed space I could take my paintbrush fill that enclosed space in here so pretty much everything you would expect in a standard painting program is in here even a couple other things uh, there's this uh, little color dodge feature uh, which lets me go in there and fiddle with that uh, there's all sorts of stuff available actually that was some kind of selection tool so there's a lot of selection tools the other thing that digital painters are going to like, and I've seen this in a lot of digital painting workflows, is the ability to crop your canvas. This is something that Procreate can't do. And the big thing is, is like once I get my, my crop space in, if I want to make the canvas wider, let me move out. Whoops. I'm, I'm messing up here live. There we go. So I can make my canvas wider as I'm drawing. I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. And there we go. I've got a wider canvas. Uh, right there so I can keep drawing. It also tells you your available memory up here on the right hand side. This goes up and down. I don't really understand how the iPad manages memory. So that's always, that's a little bit distracting. I, I haven't found a way to turn that off yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is a way to do that. Like a lot of desktop apps, there are also drop down menus. So if I go down to view, I can bring up a bunch of other things. You can save different work spaces in here. So if you're set up to draw one kind of thing, you can create a workspace for that. If you're set up to do a more painterly style, you can set your workspace up to do that. You also have color libraries in here. So these are all pre-populated. I haven't played with these at all. Um, but you can kind of jump in here and grab quick colors. That's kind of nice. Obviously, you can make your own color libraries as well. So if you're creating a multi-page thing like a comic or, or an illustration that you want to use the same color palette for, you can use that uh, over and over again. And there's drop downs for all sorts of things. The selection tool, the layers have a drop down. You have an image drop down. You can pull images in here. Obviously, you have your resize and your canvas resize. Color balance, brightness, that sort of thing. We can go in here and we can adjust all of that stuff uh, like you can on most desktop desktop programs as well. So that is kind of nice. The last thing I wanted to show were my perspective tools. So let me uh, make sure that I'm on a good layer. Let me uh, grab a nice brush here. And then up here, we've got some uh, different options. This is just going to put our perspective grid down. If I there's a locking tool, so if I want to move it around, I can go in here and, and move it up or move it down, move it pretty much wherever I want to. Once I lock it in though, and I'm on my brush, everything that I'm going to do is going to snap to that perspective grid. You can toggle that off if you want to, uh, but it's kind of a nice feature if you want to draw in perspective quickly, kind of cool. This is obviously like a one point perspective grid. Uh, I'll toggle that off. There's also a multi-point perspective. It's a little hard to hit with the iPad pencil. This is uh, a two-point perspective. Might be a little bit hard to see because it's kind of hovering over that. If I unlock it, maybe I can move it around. Let me... Uh, this is moving my perspective lines. But yeah, all of this is customizable so I can move around my perspective points. If I want to move this way down here, go ahead and lock that again. Now I can draw. Sometimes you, you snap to... Uh, not the grid you're looking for there that but that's two point there's obviously three points lastly there's eclipses so if you want to draw on circles 
you could set up your circle. Uh, you can also adjust this and turn it into an eclipse. So this is Paintstorm Studio, a very, very nice program. I really like it. Right now it is $12.99 on the App Store, which is a pretty good deal for a, a hardcore painting program like this. As far as how it compares to Procreate, I would say that it has a lot of similar features. This is really geared more towards painters, digital painters. Not that Procreate isn't, but I think the brush blending is probably a step above what you're gonna find in Procreate, even though they have been catching up with some of their wet brushes. And if you're used to using a desktop painting application and you're just coming to the iPad, this is probably gonna be easier for you to use. Procreate is streamlined, which is part of the reason I absolutely love it. But oftentimes it's it's a little tough to get used to where all of the features are hiding and where they've kind of put them away and, and things like that. So if you're looking for a desktop caliber painting app, Paintstorm Studio is worth checking out. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. I'm gonna be back on Wednesday with another video and I'm also gonna be back on Monday with a review of the XP Pen 15.6 Pro. So come back or subscribe if you wanna see those and I'll see you guys in a couple of days.